I'm Matt Stanley, and I lead sales and marketing for the analytics segment here at FICO. For today's model builder discussion, I'm joined by Andy Flint, who's in charge of product management for our modeling solutions. Andy joined FICO a long time ago and spent his first eight years in the analytic trenches, developing solutions such as the FICO score. He then moved into product management where he's looked after model builder for over a decade. Andy, what initially motivated us to develop model builder? We built Model Builder to be a focal point for all of our unique algorithms and techniques. And we had an army of data scientists working on commercially available standard tools. And we found that we really couldn't get decision ready analytics out of those tools. We started out with something that was really designed to help us build better behavior models, better Basel models, fraud models, collections models, et cetera. But what we've emerged with is something that really is of more direct benefit to our customers. And we really like that. You used the phrase decision ready earlier. What about Model Builder makes its analytics decision ready? All of the analytics that we develop in Model Builder are really there to help inform and improve decisions. And we go to great lengths to make sure that the models we discover are readily deployable into production systems. But that's not something that happens just at the end of the project. Really, to be deployment ready, it means you have to go all the way back to the beginning and think about exactly what data is going to be there at the time of the decision, how it's going to inform and improve that decision, and what you'll do to the data uh, throughout the modeling process to really get a good model. Model Builder really helps us start with the decision in mind. So when we think about what data are available at the time of the decision, and we know that those variables aren't quite right to make the best possible prediction, Modelers know they're going to have to generate lots of new predictive variables and care for those, and they still need confidence that those predictive variables can be deployed along with the rest of the model in no time at all. And another thing that's important uh, in the model development process is that you've got uh, automatic documentation of the decisions and the discoveries that you make as part of that modeling process. And here again, Model Builder makes it a lot easier to get through that whole process and be ready to make better decisions. Andy, you mentioned Model Builder's Basel capabilities as one of the reasons that you were glad that we've developed it. What are some of the other innovations that you've released over the past 10 years? Well, we've made a lot of great improvements in the software to a lot of the core modeling functions, things like interactive binning and reject inference that we were really first to market with those things. Some other elements that have really made a big difference over the years are our ability to automatically generate reports that come out of each model and to document clearly the decisions that an analyst makes as they develop their final model. In the last releases of Model Builder, we put an emphasis on, on handling big data. And there we brought in uh, the Hadoop file system and MapReduce algorithms so that we can grow these uh, data mining techniques to incredibly large data sets and sizes. And we added text mining and the semantic scorecard so that we can really learn what's hiding inside of hard to crack sources like unstructured text, comments coming from uh, discussions on websites and chat rooms and so forth. And finally, we added the economic impact module, which, a lot, which allows lenders to really fine tune their provisioning and loss reserves and capital management based on the projections that they're making about where the economy is headed. And that's a really powerful tool for bankers. Great stuff, Andy. Because each of these trends, real world data, text analytics, and incorporating macroeconomic factors into our predictions of risk are so important, we'll be exploring them in more detail in subsequent discussions.